Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah, County Gosh in California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray that the Most High blesses this lesson this evening. He has more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand the events that are currently happening on the earth, so we get a much better understanding of things that are soon to come on the earth. I was just looking at um, the news, but what's going on over in Atlanta and how they shot down another unarmed man of color who was running away from uh, the police officers and they shot him in the back. Now, if we were under their rule, as they've been for thousands of years, and there weren't uh, cameras or even if there were cameras, we already know that they would twist and turn the facts to their favor. That's what they've done in all facets of, uh, of this um, time period, of their, of their era. And we're going to be getting into this really quick, um, part four of the medieval empire of the Israelites. We're going to show you how the, the uh, events of history have been so convoluted by these people that um, they've twisted absolutely everything. And now if they're willing to twist things in the past like this, I mean, do you put it past them how they twist everything that we see even, you know, in day-to-day -day life? When they don't have um, cameras on them, they just make up any little, any little thing they want and push it off as fact. They've done this in the past. They do it, they do it now. And if they had the opportunity, they would continue to do it in the future. But we're going to expose some more information that many of us believed was true, when, especially when we came into this truth. When I used to come into this truth, I used to uh, make, um, I used to memorize a lot of these um, dates, make my kids memorize a lot of these dates. Um, so that in case they ever got into a conversation with uh, any of these Gentiles, they would be very prepared to have, you know, any kind of confrontation as far as the scriptures and history and things like that is concerned. But even in many of these dates, we're going to realize that a lot of this stuff is fake. A lot of the things that they've, made up is fake, just like what they do now to us when they shoot us down and then they make up their own, um, you know, their own idea of what happened. It's always a stop resisting when you're not resisting because they want to have any opportunity to be able to bust a cap in us and not have to pay for it. And as you can see, you know, how the Most High is exposing them day by day. You just imagine how it was, you know, 10 years ago, shoot, last year, you know, 20 years ago, 100 years ago, how they were just murdering us and then just justifying it. We're going to read just a little bit from this the medieval empire of the Israelites, and it's going to destroy some of the um, long held views that we've been taught. We're going to be talking about um, things found in the Qumran caves. Dead Sea Scrolls and how they don't fit history, how when they talked about when the time they actually, um, you know, canonized scripture, which wasn't true. And we already know that they've been hiding plenty of our information, plenty of our books, and you got people out here who still fight to pretty much give them that leeway to make it seem as if these people, these Gentiles, have been telling us the truth. They lie about absolutely everything. So if you're still stuck on 80 books, 66 books, this is going to show you even even more so how they've hidden information. So if you're still going to keep uh, you know, insisting that your enemy is going to tell you the truth, they can shoot down one of our brethren right in front of us and make up a whole totally different story and not lose a, an, a, a wink of sleep because these people don't have a conscience. Just like the scripture talks about how there are people that has made, you know, for the left-hand side and for wickedness, and are people that are made for the right-hand side and the most high. And you can see it playing out day by day on television. We're going to start up here where it says, uh, let me see here. 
This will be page 225. Actually, hold on. Where did it go? And of course, I want to get it right here. No, it's actually page 225, yes. The Scaligarian chronology literally compelled the scientists to date the Qumran manuscripts at the start of our era, notwithstanding that there are uh, New Testament texts among the Qumran manuscripts, which was impossible in the first century. Exactly. It was being impossible to have New Testament scripts because the New Testament hadn't been written yet. So they had to redate this to a, a much more common era date. But they kind of set all this up to kind of give, uh, you know, credence and give, uh, you know, try to make it seem as if, you know, remember now, I said certain people got lands around the same time that uh, these texts are right here were discovered, supposedly. Okay. So look, look, so one needs to recognize that these manuscripts also cannot serve as evidence of the Bible's antiquity. Okay, so these Qumran, you know, scripts, manuscripts can't be used to make it seem as if um, the Bible was an old book, which is what they're always trying to do. They're always trying to make it seem as if these texts came from, you know, thousands of years ago. But you can't. It says, it is assumed that its canon was established by the Council of Laodicea, supposedly in 363 AD. However, no documents of this and other early councils were preserved. In reality, then the canon is considered officially established only from the time of the Council of Trent, which was convened in 1545 and lasted with breaks until 1563. So the whole canonization process wasn't even completed until 1563. And there's no proof that it happened in 363 or 325 AD. Like we said, nothing but lies all the way through. Their history is being absolutely debunked in this book. So just like today, you know, we got many people who, you know, believe in the Catholic Church. When, you know, they were taking lands and justifying it with scripts that are pictures or, you know, writings, you know, that never existed with the donation of Constantine. If you haven't watched that video, go check that one out as well. So if they set up everything with lies, they set up the canonization with lies, set up the donation of Constantine in order for their, you know, their legitimacy to take lands with lies. This is nothing but lies. Absolutely nothing but lies. So let's continue. It says, however, no documents of this and other uh, early councils were, were preserved. Of course, they're not going to preserve them because they didn't happen. In reality, then, the canon is considered officially established only from the time of the Council of Trent, which was convened in 1545 and lasted with breaks until 1563. Disputes and the struggle of various groups at the council around the biblical canon lasted nearly 17 years. We emphasize at the end of the 16th century. The Council of Trent not only approved the canon of the Bible on its order on, on, on its orders, they compiled the sadly famous index of forbidden books. Now it's you know it should be pretty easy to see why all of a sudden now what what do we push with? What, what, what Bible are we pretty much pushed to use? The 1611, the King James 1611. Why don't we have other Bibles earlier than that? Because there weren't any. Because they weren't established. The Council of Trenton discovered the uh, discover pretty much give their credence to the um, canonization until 1545. 1563, actually, my bad. So in 1611, not that long later, there comes the King James Bible, which is now the one that's always pushed as the only one. Well, might, or the best one. Well, if there's none other before that, that would make sense, right? All right, so let's keep let's go ahead now talk about these index of forbidden books. Okay? The index of forbidden books uh, and destroy well let's go let's read the whole paragraph. 
The Council of Trent not only approved the canon of the Bible on its orders, they compiled the sadly famous index of forbidden books and destroyed a mass of writings which were recognized as apocryphal or hidden. In particular, the annals of the Judaic and Israelite kings. So they hid those too, because they're, they're, they're trying to push in a whole universal, you know, dogma right now. So they're going to get rid of these books pertaining to these particular group of people. Okay. So that's books again called the annals of the Judaic and Israelite kings. We will never read these books. One can maintain for certain um, they were destroyed because they described history, not as it was set forth in the books of the victorious factions, in which connection um, the Apocrypha were many times greater than the writings recognized as canonical. Okay, so the Apocrypha books, the ones that were hidden, all right, were many times greater than the writings recognized as canonical. So the books that they recognized were at a lower level. The ones that they hid were at a higher level. And the one, you know, to the victor goes the spoils. So the ones who were the victorious ones were the ones who got to set up history or his story, as we all know. Okay. So we got Yaakov Lentzman, Origin of Christianity. I'm sure I'm probably one of his books. They damned and destroyed the authors too. There is a note, okay, opposite many names in the index. Donato Arture, uh, which means damned author. That is an author damned by the Roman church. Not only books, but also names of authors went forever into non-existence. Okay, so they got rid of the books. They damned the authors, all because it did not go with what it was that they wanted to teach. Just like they do today. When we start to bring out other books and other understanding, they attack us. They, you know, they attack our credibility. They attack our families. You know, they try anything to do to try to bring, uh, take away legitimacy to our claims. So now you understand they've been doing this for hundreds of years. And they do the same things today. There's nothing new under the sun. They don't prove that what they're saying is true. They just hide the information, hide the books, and hide the authors. Nothing new under the sun. So like I said, we can see now that these people, you know, you can see them, how they, how they react, you know, how they act daily, you know, in life. That's why we know that this is the end because just look at, look at the news. People are saying, you know, this is fake. That's fake. That's not right. This, you know, it's things that are, you know, that are happening daily. People saying that there's no such thing as systematic racism. How can, you know, the center is lying because they have no souls. So like I said, now you can easily see, you know, who the Most High has given, you know, eyes to see and ears to hear. And the ones, you know, that have their eyes blinded and they can't hear anything. You see it on social media. You see it on the news. You know, you see facts. You see things like that. You see the fact that um, you see Psalms 83 playing out every day. With people, they still stuck it with Black Lives Matter. They stuck it with Black, but they refuse to admit who we really are. But it's, it's all coming to a head. Things are going to get even crazier very soon. I want to bring out another video quick uh, soon that shows how you know this situation is playing out right now. Is uh, is actually goes with a story in the Book of Jasher. We'll get into that also shortly, but I wanted to bring this out to you guys also so you have a chance to kind of check out this information. And like I said, I only read maybe three quarters of a page and look at all that that meat and all that truth is right there. So like I said, for now on, they need to prove things and they can't just prove it to themselves. So they can shoot us down and prove it to themselves that it was a justified killing all the time. But now the Most High is going to make them, they're going to have to explain it to him. They're going to have to justify their actions to him. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the Earthly Mother, who is wisdom, who is Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.